Welcome to an ultralight airplane video from the ultralight airplane workshop. This video is a little bit more of a tutorial. I've done some tutorials in the past, specifically on the application OpenVSP, but this time I wanted to do a little bit something different, and I've decided to make a tutorials, or at least a small series of tutorials, on X-Plane 12. If you don't know, X-Plane 12 is a flight simulator. And as far as I can tell in my research and playing with it, it seems to be the most realistic in creating the correct flight dynamics for an airplane. The Microsoft Flight Simulator is getting better. It used to be so-so, but it's getting better. But still, I think X-Plane 12 is doing a better job. And I want to do some virtual flight testing for the airplane that I'm designing, the UWS-4. And I think X-Plane 12 is probably the best application to do that in. So I'm going to go ahead and create the UWS-4 in X-Plane 12. And I'm going to have a tutorial series on how I do it. Now this is going to be the first one in the series. This is an application that's in X-Plane 12, and it's for describing the characteristics of an airfoil. So I'm going to use the airfoil that we're going to put on the UWS-4 and put it into Airfoil Maker. So let's get started. First, let's get the X-Plane 12 Airfoil Maker program running. Now I bought X-Plane 12 on Steam, so let's launch it from Steam. So I've got Steam here running, my library is here, we'll hit play. So it pops up a little dialog here with three applications we can run. X-Plane 12, Plane Maker, and Airfoil Maker. So we want Airfoil Maker, we'll select that and hit play. So the application Airfoil Maker, X-Plane 12, has popped up here. So now we got to figure out how in the world we're going to use this program. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to look at the online manual for Airfoil Maker. So here is the online manual for Airfoil Maker. I will put the URL here at the bottom of the screen, and if I don't forget, I'll put it in the description for this video. So for the most part, we're going to be following this manual as we go through this video. Now the goal for Airfoil Maker is to specify the coefficient of lift, coefficient of drag, and coefficient of moment at various angles of attack for our airfoil. And that will tell X-Plane 12 how the wings should perform at various attitudes, various angles of attack. Now there are two ranges of angles of attack. There's minus 20 to plus 20, and that's this tab here, AOA 20. Then there's AOA 180, which is minus 180 degrees to plus 180 degrees. Then there's a couple other tabs that we'll get to a little bit later. Now the airfoil can have different coefficients at different Reynolds numbers. If you don't know what the Reynolds number is, I'll put a link up here in the upper right-hand corner to a video that I did quite some time back describing what Reynolds number is and what it's for. But the airfoil can behave differently at different Reynolds numbers. And for us, that's basically going to be different speeds. Now, the speeds we're generally going to be interested in is the stall speed up to maybe the cruise speed. It could be clear up to the dive speed. So first, let's figure out some of those Reynolds numbers, and I have a spreadsheet for that. So here's a spreadsheet that I made for calculating Reynolds numbers. I put cord over here, so that's the cord, the length from the leading edge to the trailing edge of our wing, and for tails, whatever kind of flying surface we have, and speed, and I'm using knots. So the cord for our wing, the UWS-4, is 5.18 feet. Our stall speed is 24 knots, so that gives us a Reynolds number. Oh, by the way, the density I'm using is sea level density. So that gives us a stall speed roll number of 1.33 million. And then at our cruise speed, or maximum level flight cruise speed, 55 knots, that's 3.05. And then our dive speed at 95 knots, that's 5.28. And kind of an in-between, kind of a normal cruise speed, not a maximum would be 45 knots, that's 2.5. Why don't we just go ahead and do all four of these calculations and see if there's significant difference in our various coefficients, lift, drag, and moment. If there's very little difference, I'll just pick one of these and we'll just go with it. If there's some difference between them, not necessarily significant, but enough that it might change the behavior of the wing, then we might pick at least two and maybe all four. We'll see. Now, in order to figure out what those coefficients are going to be for our airfoil, let's go run XFLR5. So here we have XFLR5. By the way, this is version 6.58. And I've loaded in the airfoil that we want to use for the UWS-4 ultralight airplane. Now, this particular airfoil was developed by a patron of the channel. Thank you very much, Keith. And we're calling it the UAK01-180-31-33-286. Let's 
This is an 18% thick airfoil, and that maximum thickness is at 31% of the cord. And the camber on this is 3.31%, and that maximum camber is at 20.5% of the cord. And the number of points we have for this airfoil is 200 points. What I want to do is go ahead and use all four of those Reynolds numbers that we just looked at. I'm going to go ahead and quickly do that analysis. I won't bore you with it since this video really isn't about XFLR5. Now here's our solution in XFLR5. So there is some difference between these various Reynolds numbers up here in our stall area. Down here in our cruise area, there's almost no difference. And the differences down here in our negative angle of attack, there is some difference, but we won't normally be operating down here in negative 20 degrees <laughs> angle of attack. So I'm not sure that it's really that important. So let's look up here in the stall area a little bit closer. So this green one is at our stall speed, our normal stall speed, 24 knots. So you can see we have a very nice gentle fall off in our stall. It's not sharp, it's not abrupt. This brown one is at 45 knots, a little sharper, we got a little bit higher lift. By the way, this is coefficient lift versus angle of attack, should have mentioned that earlier. And if you're not familiar with coefficient of lift, it's just a measure of how much your airfoil is lifting as you change its angle of attack, where its angle of attack is the angle of the airfoil relative to the wind. So as you tilt the nose of the airfoil up more, you increase the angle of attack. And if you'd like to learn more about coefficient lift, I'll put a link up here in the upper right hand corner to an aerodynamics video where I talk about that. This blue one is at our maximum level flight speed of 55 knots. It's a little bit higher coefficient of lift yet, but also a little bit sharper stall curve here. And then this red one is at our 95 knot dive speed, maximum dive speed. Now it's Fairly sharp cut off, but it's not deep back here on the back side. Assuming that XFLR5 have come up with a correct solution here. So I don't think that this 45 knot one will be worth it. X-Plane 12 can interpolate between the various Reynolds numbers that we add back in Airfoil Maker. So if I only did this 55 knot and this 24 knot, it'll probably fairly accurately come up with this 45 knot in between. I should make a little correction on what I just said. In some places, the interpolation will not work. So let's talk about where it will work. From down in here up to about right in here, interpolation between this blue and green one to get the brown one will work reasonably well. Not perfect, but reasonably well. And from about all right in here on down, it'll work reasonably well. The place that won't work very well is in between those two spots from about here to about here. As you can see, the brown one is actually above both these others. So the interpolation between green and blue right here at this crossing point would be right here at this crossing point. So the interpolation won't represent this brown line, this 45 knot line, very well at all. So at some later point, I might go ahead and stick the coefficients for this brown line into Airfoil Maker. Probably not right now. This 95 knot, not really that interested in the stall characteristics at 95 knots. And the reason for that is we would actually rip off the wings of the airplane if we tried to stall it at 95 knot dive speed. So we won't be going there anyway. So I think we'll just ignore both the 45 and 95. We will stick with the 55 and 24 knots. And those are the only ones that will enter. And there's not a huge difference between these, but I think it's probably enough difference that I'll do these two. So let's go back to Airfoil Maker. But we'll keep this around because we're going to have to come back to it. Well, now that we're back in Airfoil Maker, what I want to do is have two tabs here. One at our stall Reynolds number and one at our maximum level speed Reynolds number. And we got these up here. So it's 1.33 for our stall speed. So let's change that one down here. Now let's add another one and we're going to do it at 3.05 Reynolds number. So let's add a new high. So we now have another one here. Let's change it to 3.05. So we now have our two tabs for our, our coefficient lift, our coefficient drag, and our coefficient of moment at these two Reynolds numbers. Now I'm going to concentrate on the 24 knot airflow characteristics at the moment. That's this green one. So for now, let's hide the other three. So here's our 24 knot airfoil behavior. 
I think the one thing I'm going to do first is I'm going to come down here to this section here. By the way, I guess I should point out, there are really three basic sections over here on this side here. This top one is setting coefficient of lift. That's this green line here. The second one is coefficient of drag. That's this kind of pinkish, orangish one. And this last one down here, well, it's not the last, but the next one down here is coefficient of moment. And that's this yellow one here. And then this bottom one is specifying what the angle of attack is when we're at our minimum lift. That'd be over here. And the angle of attack when we are at maximum lift. And that would be right here. I think we're just going to go ahead and set these first. So we're going to come up here and take a look up here at these coordinates right up here. It says X and Y. So X is angle of attack in degrees. Y is coefficient of lift. So I'm going to come up here to this maximum. I'm just going to eyeball this instead of looking at the actual data. So that is coefficient of lift of 1.7 at an angle of 18.3 degrees. So what I'm going to say here on this maximum is 18.3. Now you've noticed as I set that, it started moving this line out here a little bit. Now this maximum is over here at 18.4. Look at this down here. So it says about 18.4, 18.3, so that's correct. Now this one down here, let's take a look at this. This says our minimum lift is at minus 15.4 degrees. So let's set that. So it's already minus 15. Let's go ahead and say 0.4. Now that didn't move this one down here much. You can see there's a bright green and a dim green. So that dim green is where we started at. Bright green is where we're at now. Now before I lose what I've got here, I'm going to go ahead and save this out. Not where it's going to go ultimately, but to a temporary area, a design area that I'm using for the UWS4. So I'm going to save it out so I don't lose it. So as I said, this section right up in here is for setting the coefficient of lift. This first one is the intercept. That is the coefficient of lift that we get at zero degrees angle of attack. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to put my cursor right there at zero degrees and look at the Y value up here. So that is 0.29 roughly, 0 0.28, 0.29. So I'm going to pick 0.28. I could actually go and look up these actual numbers instead of eyeballing it here, but this is faster. So 0.28, so right now it's at 0.25. So one, two, three. So now it's at 0.28. Next one is the slope, and that's the slope of this line. It's how much does the coefficient of lift increase for each degree of angle of attack change? I think the easiest way to do that is to look at coefficient of lift at minus five, coefficient of lift at plus five degrees, find out what that total coefficient of lift change is, and then just move the decimal place over one, and that'll give us our number. So I'm gonna write this down as I figure it out. So I'm going to look at the X value, Take it to minus five. So there's 0.499. So the Y value, let's come down just a little bit to match. Okay, let's call it 0.257. That's minus 0.257. Now let's come up here to plus five and do the same thing. That's 0 0.84, 843. So let's add those two together. I get 1.10. So that means for each degree that we change here, we're changing our coefficient of lift by 0.11. Now they've got 0 0.102, that's awfully close to what we already have. And you'll find that for most airfoils, that's actually gonna be pretty close to what it is. The one they have here by default is pretty close. Okay, now we have 0.11. For the moment, I'm gonna skip over the linear range and lift power, and I'm gonna set the maximum. So that's gonna be the maximum lift we get at our stall angle of attack. So let's go figure that out. We already did it once, but let's go ahead and do it again. So 1.70 appears to be that number. So let's come down here and do that. So we're already pretty close to that, 1.7. Now I'm going to come back and look at the linear range and lift power. What we want to do between, oh, about this area and this area is we want to have a nice smooth curve here that resembles the curve we have up here. And we get that by playing with these two values. It's probably going to take quite a bit of playing around for me to do that. So let me go ahead and do that offline, then I'll come back and tell you what I did. Okay, I think this is fairly close to what I want. What I did is I started increasing lift power. What that did is it 
started moving this curved area up a little bit higher, making it a smoother curve. And I took the linear range and decreased it just a little bit. If you remember, there was just a slight kink right in here. That moved this kink down just a little bit farther and allowed a smoother transition here. Now it's probably really difficult to see, but there's just a very slight lump right in here above where this angle of this line here would be. That's okay, it's not too bad. So I think I can accept that. Now one thing I can't accurately represent is this little kink right here. We'll just have to live without that. The next thing to do is model the drop in lift right after you hit the stall at your maximum angle of attack. And that's this little drop right here. Now as you can see, we don't have that. We have a nice smooth drop off. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down to the stall drop and we're going to drop that down. So you, I just hit it once to zero and you can see it got rid of it. Now there is a fairly sharp change here, but we don't have that drop that was there. So we got rid of that. Now the next thing to do is set the curvature, this curve in here, after we get past that drop, which we eliminated. So let's play around with this stall power and this stall drop to try to represent what we're seeing in this area. Now this angle of attack only goes up to 20. We're actually showing up to 25 here. So we're really only reasonably model this in here. Although when we go to the 180, we can probably do a slightly better job of coming out here straight. Well, we'll talk about that here in a minute. So let me play around with this just a little bit. Well, it looks like the stall drop did a better job of representing the curve than the stall power did. Although we'll know a little bit more about that after we go here to the 180 angle of attack. But before we do that, we need to work on these other two sections. So coefficient of drag is next. That will be followed by the coefficient of moment. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the minimum coefficient of drag. Now if we look at this coefficient of drag versus coefficient of lift graph here, and this is XFLR5, you can see we have something that almost looks like a drag bucket here. Our curve comes around and then there's a little bit of a jump, not much, but a little bit, and then a little bit back in. And it, and it kind of resembles drag bucket, but I really don't want to deal with that. There isn't enough difference here between where it would be excluding this little drag bucket and including it. So I'm just going to assume we don't have drag bucket, that we have a turbulent flow airfoil, which we do, and we don't have a laminar. So let's exclude anything that has to deal with the drag bucket. So the first thing to do is get our minimum coefficient of drag. So that's going to be the portion of the graph that goes farthest to the left. So let's zoom in and do that. Again, we're going to use our cursor. I'm going to come in here and it, right in here, our coefficient of drag is 0.0065. So let's set that down here. Oh, wow, we're very close to that already. So we're going to got 0 0.006. I think we'll just leave it like that. That's actually a pretty good number. Now the next thing to know is what is that coefficient of lift at our minimum coefficient of drag? So again, let's come over here. And it looks like that coefficient of lift is 0.271. So just a little bit more here. 0.271. So you can see we're already starting to move this kind of pinkish line a little bit. Here's where it started. It's already moved out a little bit. The next thing we want to know is what is our coefficient of drag at an angle of attack of 10? Now if you remember this graph here shows coefficient of drag versus coefficient of lift. It doesn't show us angle of attack. So what we're going to do is we're going to cheat a little bit and come back over to our coefficient lift versus angle of attack. Let's go to 10 degrees and figure out what our coefficient lift is. Coefficient lift is 1.3, it's called 3, 1.33. So let's go back to our drag. So now let's come up to a coefficient lift of 1.33. Now again, look up here on the Y. There's 1.31. There's 1.329. Okay, so let's just call that 1.33. Now, what is our coefficient of drag? Coefficient of drag is 0 0.01, let's call it 0 0.014. So right here, let's go 0 0.0114 is what they've got. We're going to go to 0 0.014 and then down to there. So that's what we've got for our 10 degree coefficient of drag.
So the next thing to do is to try to set how much this curvature is in here. Should it curve up steeper, faster, or should it be flatter? And we could just kind of go with whatever we have here. We probably won't be too far off. But let's do a little bit better of trying to gauge this. Now again, this is going to be a little bit of pain because this is angle of attack here. This is coefficient of drag. And our graph is coefficient of lift versus coefficient of drag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a spot out here somewhere just a little bit below our maximum coefficient of lift. I'm going to figure out what that angle is and what that coefficient of lift is. I'm going to come back here and figure out what the coefficient of drag is and change that curvature so that at that angle I get the correct coefficient of drag. And that'll get us pretty close to what we need. So let's come back here to this application. Let's go back to graph 2. So let's pick... Um, Let's pick an angle of 15 degrees. So at 15 degrees, we have coefficient lift of 1.63. Let's go back to our drag graph. So at 1.63, pretty close to 1.63, our coefficient of drag is 0 0.0284. Let me write that down. Okay, and let's bring back up Airfoil Maker. So over here at 15 degrees, now right down here is our angle and right here is our coefficient of drag, this kind of pinkish orangish one. So at 15 degrees, there's 15 degrees. Now it's showing 0 0.0262. We wanted 0 0.0284. So we would like to have just a little more curvature, bring that drag up just a little bit higher. So let's go back here to our drag power and let's just try to go to Let's increase it by one. Now I'm going back to my angle of 15.27, so we're getting closer. Let's go one more, see if that does it. Let's come back to 15 degrees, 0 0.280. That's pretty close. I think we'll go with that. We want a 0 0.284, that's good enough. So if at least in this area here, I think we're fairly close to the correct drag curve for this up here. Now, as I said before, I don't want to deal with the drag bucket. I don't think we have enough of a drag bucket to really call a drag bucket. So I'm going to leave the drag bucket coefficient of lift, the width, the depth at zero. So you won't be able to see any sort of a little dip here like a drag bucket. We're not having one. Well, the next thing to work on is this section down here, which is our coefficient of moment. Now setting the coefficient of moment graph is going to be pretty wishy-washy. You may have thought that I've been kind of playing rough and loose with the numbers so far. It's going to be far worse with the coefficient of moment. That's because coefficient of moment is a very squirrely, very wavy line. In fact, let's come up here and look at it. This is coefficient of moment on the vertical axis. This is our angle of attack on this horizontal axis. Now, typically in the literature, the literature likes to say that your coefficient of moment is generally linear between your maximum angle of attack and your low angle of attack. And very, very roughly, it is. It's nearly a flat line along here, although we have this little interesting dip along here. Airfoil Maker won't really let us model this little dip here. So if you ignore that, we're fairly close to being a flat line along here. Not quite, but roughly. So what Airfoil Maker wants us to put in is where we go from being roughly this flat line to changing direction. In other words, this is kind of a positive slope line here. We change to a kind of a negative slope right up here at our stall. And again, down here, we go to a negative slope right here at our negative stall, at our low angle of attack stall. So those are the two numbers we have to add in where our coefficient moment goes negative slope here and here. So that's what these two numbers here are, alpha one and alpha two. So alpha one is this spot down here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. That is at minus 15.1 degrees. Let's go ahead and put that in here. 15.1. And then up here at the top end, right there is 17 and a half degrees, 17.5 or six. So we'll set that. So 17.5. So you can see it modified it from where it started. Not much, but a little bit. So now we are actually going to enter coefficient of moments instead of just angles. So the first thing that we want to know here on this one is what is the coefficient of moment at minus 20 degrees? So let's go ahead and come up here. We don't actually know because we don't have it down to there, but we could extrapolate this line coming out here. 
So it looks like it would be very, very close to zero here. So I think we're just gonna say at minus 20, it's zero. I think that'll be pretty close. Okay, we got that. Now let's go ahead and do the other end. So plus 20. So at plus 20, what is the coefficient of moment? And it looks like it is minus 0, 1, 1. So let's go ahead and enter that up here. So we got 0 0.077. So let's go ahead and crank this up. So there's 0 0.011. Now we want to know what's this coefficient of moment where we had these minimum and maximums at, where it changed the direction. Let's go ahead and do this top one first. So the coefficient of moment there is minus 0, 0, 0.087. So let's do that one first. 0, 0, 0.08. Okay, 0, 0, 0.087. Now, I'm going to cheat just a little bit on this one back here. Now, you notice that minimum, right just a little bit above that in the angle of attack, we have quite a bit of a little dip here. So if I use this coefficient of moment right here, Airflow Maker is going to assume that there's a straight line between this spot and this spot. Well, that means we won't be very accurately modeling the coefficient of moment right in here. It's going to think that coefficient of moment is more negative than it really is by quite a bit. And so it won't do a very good job of modeling this. Now, it's probably not that important. We will almost, well, very rarely be operating down at this angle of attack here. And we'll almost never, ever be operating down here. So I would like to model this area in here just a little bit better. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to take a look at this. I'm going to eyeball and extrapolate and say that a straight line would probably come down to about here at this point. And that coefficient of moment is minus 0, 0.049. So that's what I'm going to enter instead so I can better accurately model our coefficient of moment in this area. So we come back down here and we say, it's almost there already, 0 0.049. So we almost had to do very little there. So now we have our coefficient of moment set up in Airfoil Maker. Uh, it's still only for angles of attack from minus 20 to plus 20. Next, we need to go and look at minus 180 to plus 180. Now, the thing I'm more interested in here is right up here around stall for coefficient of lift. I want to make sure that it still looks roughly right. Now, I don't know what it looks past 25 degrees. I didn't set the angle to be more than 25 degrees in XFLR5. So beyond that, I really don't know how it's going to behave. But I just wanted to make sure it's still fairly smooth, fairly rounded up in here. And it looks like it probably is. Now, on this angle of attack from minus 180 to plus 180, this was really just for your information, just because you can't really change much of what's going on. You can, there's a text value that you can go and change. These values over here are still really only changing from minus 20 to plus 20 angle of attack, but you can kind of see what's happening at bizarre angles. You know, you're flying backwards or something. You can see what's happening here. That's just really only for information. So there's nothing for us to do here. So the next section over is the wing lift and drag. Now remember, this back here, this is for the sectional airfoil. It's assuming that your wing has an infinite span. This is the behavior that you'll have. But of course, our wings have a very finite span. So if you kind of want to get an idea of like lift to drag for your airplane, coefficient of lift, coefficient of drag and such, what you can do is enter your aspect ratio of your wing. And ours is 4.5 if I remember correctly. So let's come down to 4, 4.5. And our efficiency, it's probably closer to 0.8 or 0.75. I'm just going to leave it here. Doesn't really matter. So again, this angle looks like it's minus 20 to plus 20. This purple line is your lift to drag for the wing. So it looks like our wing, best lift to drag, that angle is one degree, one degree angle of attack. Now let's go on to the last section. Our last tab here is section. What we want to do is kind of give a semi-accurate representation of the shape of our airfoil. Now, this is not used at all in calculating the flight dynamics of our airplane. It's really only used in the visual representation, just to make it look a little bit better. It wants to know the thickness of our airfoil. We have an 18% thick, so let's go up to 18. 
and let's really roughly trying to make it look right. Let's come back to our picture of our airfoil. Show. There we go. So here's the picture of our airfoil. Let's start dragging some dots around. Oh, that's not too bad. That's close enough for what we're doing. X-Plane 12 will do interpolation to give it a nice smooth curvature around here. But I think that's fairly close for what we want. Okay, let's go ahead and save this out. So we've only done our stall speed characteristics. We also need to go up here to our maximum level flight speed and do the same thing. So we need to come back here to our 20 and set all this stuff again. Except this time we need to come up here and we will switch over and we will select. So now we have our Reynolds number of 3.05 and we'll do this all again. I'm not going to do it in this video. It's just repeating the same thing. And we'll want to do the same thing for our tail airfoil. Now that's a symmetric airfoil, so it won't have any camber. So if things like, let's come back to graph two. So things like this lift coefficient, the intercept will have to go through zero. And this thing will be symmetric. It has the same shape between this side and this side. It's just be a mirror image. So there's not as much work to do when we're doing a symmetric airfoil. Whatever we do on one side, we just get the same numbers except negative on the other side. Okay, guys, I hope you found this interesting. I plan on doing some more X-Plane 12 videos and putting the UDS-4 airplane in there, at least the flight model of it, not the probably not the visual model. That takes a lot of work. Maybe later, we'll see. Thanks for watching. Till next time.